Well, I haven't done a podcast episode in a while, and if you're new, welcome. I'm Lori Rivers, your host, and this is the Awake Space Astrology Podcast. I was recording an episode the other day, and then I found out um, someone who is very responsible for me being here with you, Alan Oaken, the masterful astrologer has passed on and I was really kind of in my feels about it. It was a very fitting day to find out that news because Venus, Mars, and Pluto were opposite my Sun and Mercury. There was a whole lot of thinking going on, a whole lot of feeling going on before that. And his passing was both emotional, and I'm doing all right, guys. It's, it, it happens. Um, we all pass someday. But in thinking of of how he and I interacted, uh, because I wasn't a student of his, not officially, but I would correspond with him back in 1999 uh, through 2002 while I was doing some research on esoteric astrology, and he laid a great foundation on that. That is not beginning astrology, by the way. Okay, it's, it's a lot deeper. And it was in considering these correspondences, you know, uh, on the day I found out it was passing, that I realized, you know, he didn't really te- treat me like a kid astrologer. He didn't treat me like a pupil. He spoke to me like a peer. And at the time, I just felt like I was forever going to be a student, even though I was reading natal charts. I I hadn't gained my confidence yet. Um, After every reading, I was an anxious mess wondering if I'd communicated the horoscope correctly, if I'd advised the client correctly. There was a lot of learning to do still in communicating. And and I was doing just fine. I was just really hard on myself. That's why I tell you to be gentle with you. It's from my own experiences. And Alan, he, like I said, he didn't treat me like the kid astrologer. And all these other professionals in the different organizations I'd belong to, they, they would keep their thumb right on your forehead and keep you from moving forward. You know, they were very resistant, especially to women, um, often. Um, they, w- they would help all the young men, but even then, it, it was hard to progress. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. He was encouraging. He was kind. He was thoughtful and did really um, an amazing job at never really giving me any answers, but often dropping really good hints and encouraging when I was on the right track or, or on a seemingly good rabbit hole, um, there was a lot of encouragement. And so um, his passing was kind of an unfolding a conscious unfolding for me that, you know, I had not only great teachers and mentors along my journey, because he certainly wasn't the only one. Um, I should have listened a little harder to Joanne Wickenberg back in 2002 <laughs> when she said, Lori, just write the damn book. Just write it. You're, you, you don't need to be more qualified. And like so many of you, who are studying astrology, I felt like I was never going to be qualified enough because there was so much information to gather, so much more to know. And uh, it isn't that I didn't write books. Um, I wrote workbooks for my students. I wrote handbooks. You know, these were all self-published and printed out and stapled back in the early 2000s. Um, They're in a box somewhere in Washington state. But it was an amazing awareness. And so we've got a lot going on in the world. There are a lot of transitions happening. And the old guard, rightly and wrongly, 
is moving on and there is a lot of transition happening. There's a lot of change happening. And I'm kind of dedicating this episode to this as the moon in Taurus slides towards the north node and we will see some kind of historic event. We'll talk a little bit about that as well and what that means. Uh, But this episode, this one, I really want to dedicate to Alan because it was really his work that inspired me to be the kind of astrologer I am today and practicing what I call progressive evolutionary astrology, which differs from evolutionary astrology just a tad. That was a Malcolm groan. If you don't know Malcolm, he's my dog, and he joins us here on the Awake Space podcast. Um, I was fortunate enough to study with Jeffrey Wolf Green, I've corresponded with Stephen Forrest, um, you know, studied the works of, of Arroyo and, and many others. But I always found there was still a certain uh, binary narrative. And, um, and I've been trying to remove the binary narrative since I was a brand new astrologer and I was reading the definitions for Venus and Mars. And when they would say a feminine and a masculine planet, and I was like, I don't know, this sounds kind of um, bogus. And then they'd be like, no, no, it's like electrical plugs. And it's like, I'm like, yeah, but we call it that because of our gender stereotypes. And, um, And I think there's better ways to describe things if we want to move forward as a species. And I know there's a lot of arguments against that and, you know, arguments about human nature. But a lot of those arguments for human nature were developed in the 18th century in the age of reason and then carried on through the 19th, 20th, and now 21st. Um, They're not always biological fact. There are a lot of presumptions often created by white male experts and cis white male experts at that. And so um, I think I think it's important to share a different point of view. And um, Alan did that. He, he didn't necessarily play the political games when it came to the professional astrological world. He put his work out. And that's something... I'm very conscious of now. I I couldn't care less what organizations are out there, but I certainly care about teaching good astrology, applicable astrology. And um, I'm not going to lie, I had a little cry when he passed away, and when I found out anyway, but not for long, because his work spoke volumes about his own belief systems. And even though he may not have finished that book because he got sick, I read one of his Facebook posts where he said he'd figured out the last two chapters. And um, there's a greedy part of me going, oh, I hope he made some notes. And the rest of me is like, well, he gave us so much. And if you're a student of mine, you know the one book I recommend you get is Alan Oaken's Complete Astrology. It will last you a good two years of study, if not longer. And I have my original copy that I bought way back in the 90s. And it has all of my baby astrologer notes in it. And I have a new copy that I look at from time to time just to give students uh, some info. I haven't written a beginning how to learn book because I feel that Alan's book is pretty much all you need to get started on an intense study. My goal is to give another point of view when it comes to interpretation. And that's what we do here at the Awake Space Astrology Podcast. 
we talk astrology and consciousness and how human beings express that out in the world. And that includes politics and um, spirituality and day-to-day living, including gardening. Because all of that is human expression. And that is why we are here. So, let's get on with things. Let's talk a little bit about Alan and his contribution to astrology. So, who was this Alan Oaken guy? Above all else, he was kind. If you went on Facebook, and I know most of us aren't on there anymore, but I did go because there's a lot of astrologers there. And I went to see what people were saying in his memory. And I wasn't the only astrologer, of course, that Alan was kind and generous to, with encouragement. And it was a beautiful thing to read through um, all of those lovely memories of people saying how much he did encourage them and help them along the way and what a good teacher he was, what a good mentor, friend, father, human, and what a testament Alan. And you might say, okay, where's the astrology, Lori? Go back and listen to what I just said, because that is the astrology. Astrology is both a language and a system. And Alan was a master of understanding both. And then how to apply that knowledge with wisdom in service and understanding how we express our consciousness matters and we are not fated to express it only in one way. If we have a moment and we are experiencing something less than optimal, we have in any given moment the opportunity to align our consciousness in a more optimal direction. Notice, I'm not saying positive and negative. Sometimes getting angry is exactly what you need to do to get to the next place. I teach that in Living by Luna on how to understand our emotions and the scale and how to travel it looking at our moons. Alan's work dovetailed with other research I had done as a young person, including before my astrological studies ever started, way back in Oregon City in the 1970s and 80s when I would live in that Oregon City Carnegie Library reading book after book after book, (laughs) whether it was on Tibetan Buddhism or Transcendentalism or Theosophy, whether I was reading Steiner. I didn't know these were great minds. Buckminster Fuller, I didn't know. They were just books and books and books, and I was acquiring all the knowledge I could. Because to me, knowledge seemed like the great key to freedom. And so when I found Alan's work a couple of years into my astrological studies, because remember, I couldn't get astrological books in Bahrain where I lived. And so it was on a trip to Dubai where I found a bookstore and it had astrology books and I was thrilled And the nice thing about them being in English is unless you got really lucky going back to Bahrain, the custom agent wouldn't have known what it was or checked. 
and I got my books in and out. Alan was a student of the ancient wisdom and in the group of New World Servers, and that was work I was also studying. There are a lot of accusations around it today. It's often not read um, with full understanding. I'm not going to say some of the language isn't problematic, but it has to be deciphered and not looked at in today's vernacular because it honestly, um, vernacular changes, language changes, language is fluid and ever evolving. An example of that is the word nice, be nice. In the 1500s, that meant you were a prostitute. Okay, language is fluid. If you would have said I was a nasty girl, Back in the 1980s, it would have meant I stunk. Okay? Today, it means something else. It doesn't take long for language and concepts to change. Part of the work of being in the new world servers is understanding that humans always have a choice in their consciousness. And we are always on an expansive journey and we don't just do it one time we come back over and over and over again alan was deciphering consciousness through astrology and i'm sure many other subjects i wasn't a best friend of his i i was someone he was kind enough to correspond to he was someone I looked up to. And there are reasons I have only heard kind words spoken about this man. And I should be so lucky after I pass to be remembered so. It's not why we do it. But if there's going to be a way to be immortal... That is through our work and how we treat others. And as Dr. Maya Angelou famously said, people don't remember what you do for them. They remember how you made them feel. Alan Oaken made me feel like an astrologer. Alan was born in 1944 with a remarkable chart. He was a Scorpio rising. And he had the North Node in Leo, conjunct his Pluto. And that's a pretty strong thing. He had to have been an astrologer in another life because his South Node was in Aquarius. Oddly enough, conjunct my point of fortune. With his Venus in Pisces, he understood and was able to resonate with others and wish to resonate with others. He was gentle and kind. Yes, he was indeed an Aries with a remarkable ability to self-express, often hindered by the judgment of others, something he was very sensitive to. His Gemini moon and Uranus in the seventh house were at odds with the world. There was a lot of healing to do there. And yet how he was able to communicate those deep and beautiful thoughts. That ninth house, Jupiter and Pluto conjunct the North Node. He found his ability to communicate a vast subject he was a brilliant astrologer and he was ever ever so kind 
he did a lot of good things. He, he shared a lot of wisdom and he taught many of us. His list of books is impressive. And they were wonderful structures. Um, they were wonderful structures. His books include, and I'm not going to get them all here. Let me see if I can find them. Of course, Alan Oaken's Complete Astrology. Um, let's see. There we go. Alan Oaken's Complete Astrology, which I've talked about. Soul Centered Astrology, which, if you're one of my students, if you're. Wait before you touch that, because that'll confuse you. It's, it's not straight up astrology. Uh, the Pocket Guide to the Tarot. He was very intuitive, exceptionally so. Um, Houses of the Horoscope, an introduction, which is an excellent book for any of my students. Rulers of the Horoscope, which is another great book. Pocket Guide to Numerology. Numerology Demystified. He was into the divinatory arts as above, so below. I have a copy of that somewhere. Alan had a beautiful way with words. My Venus in Gemini was fully smitten by the way he described energy. <clears throat> In a world where people describe the 8th and 12th house in ways that make people shudder in their boots, this man was able to uh, describe it in ways that um, help people understand the reality, the true reality, not, not the scary reality, but the true reality of the nature of that house. Um, my story of the houses doesn't come from Alan, but it uh, some of his work obviously has um, influenced me. It was actually Joanne telling a story, Joanne Wickenberg telling a story in one of the classes I was in um, where she talked about the development of humanity itself through the houses and I went wow and then I decided to personalize into a human singular experience this is what Alan wrote and I'm not going to read very much because I don't want to break copyright but I just want to share um, just two paragraphs the eighth house I am transformed this is one of the most complex houses of the horoscope. It contains some of the most complicated, important, and challenging issues that we face in life. In this respect, the eighth house, sorry, the eighth is the house of death, sexuality, other people's resources. It is also the area of great personal challenges on many levels. No wonder it and the sign ruler sorry, the sign ruler, Scorpio, have such a notorious reputation among astrology students. All of the issues under the banner of the eighth house have one thing in common. They are all either transformative processes or the results of those processes. Although an examination of this house tells much about the nature of an individual's physical death, the eighth it also has a lot to do with our psychological and spiritual death. It is in this portion of the horoscope that we see how we may die in one stage of our existence or to one phase of our emotional development and then be reborn into our next step in life. And, you know, to be honest, I don't see death in that spot. This is where we'll get Lori's two cents in. But I do see its grief, its beginnings and endings, its alchemy. I will caution you that note, he didn't say the cusp on the eighth house told you how you were going to die. Not at all. 
it we often cannot see our own passing in our own natal chart because it is simply transitory this body we most often see our physical passing in somebody else's chart and that's somebody who has to deal with the grief of it so don't go looking for your death in the eighth house because that is not necessarily how you find it but we do see the many deaths and I know that's an uncomfortable subject but I think it's an important subject given the state of the world. Death happens if we just change the word death to ending. Every ending is a beginning. Every ending fosters some kind of change. If a relationship ends, two lives change. There's a death, there's a grieving process. If we leave one job, we have the transition to another and we have to change our environment. There's a grieving. Even if we didn't like that job, even if we celebrated when we scooted out the door, once you get in the car and you drive away, you realize your routine is forever transformed. Right? There's a sense of joy when, when you get a tax refund and then you might gleefully spend it and then you'll notice your account isn't as full. There might be a little grieving, right? The eighth house is taboos. Alan could write about these things in ways without terrifying his students or readers. He was mindful. He was not irresponsible. When we look at the 12th house, which is quite interesting, which, by the way, if, if you've been having trouble understanding rulerships, get his rulership book. Um, and again, this is, this is his uh, Houses of the Horoscope, an introduction. This is a great book for students. So... And this is what he says about the 12th house. Because this is another one where people like to scare the pants off of people beginning to learn about astrology. You know, so the TikTokers and the YouTubers like to scare people. So, the 12th house. And again, just two paragraphs. This is the most mysterious house of the horoscope and the least personal if you move through the houses in their natural direction, the twelfth is the farthest from the ascendant. The message and meaning of the first house, I am myself, is very far removed from the message of this house, the last of the astrological domiciles. I am the universe. To think of each of us as being the universe is quite far removed from our daily corners over concerns over family, friends, money, lovers, children, career, and the like. Yet if we keep traveling just one more step in the same direction, the twelfth will lead us immediately back to the first house. This is the horoscope's way of telling us, yes, as hard as it is to conceive, each of us is a universe unto ourselves. This is the fundal, fundamental principle of astrology at work. As above, so below. Astrology can help each of us find his or her place in life because this ancient science reveals that you and I are reflections of the whole. As we grow in awareness and as we individualize and evolve, we find that our sense of ourselves as separate units, the ascendant, gradually gives way to a much greater consciousness of the cosmos in which we live and breathe and have our being. Ever wondered why I liked him? He was speaking my language. As I say, the twelfth is where we connect to our source self. And the world is really facing some 8th and 12th house matters. 
with Pluto moving through the final degrees of Capricorn. And Jupiter and, Pis- and Neptune in Pisces. There's some obfuscation. There's some mysteriousness. There's some confusion. And there's a lot of change and transformation. We're facing a world that has and will have forever changed. We will not go back to a pre-pandemic world. And with global conflict threatening, it seems that all of the old structures will go. I thought about that the day I found out about Ellen. I thought, wow, that's a pretty good time to exit. Gives us another star in the heavens. I urge you to grab his complete astrology and houses of the horoscope and rulers of the horoscope if you are a beginning astrologer or an intermediate astrologer. He offers a thoughtful viewpoint, a considerate viewpoint, a hopeful viewpoint. And if you've been studying for a while, check out his soul-centered astrology. But make sure you're really solid in your basics because it's kind of mind-bending. He was a good man, and he did a lot of good work. Oh, well, I feel like doing a patron shout-out because I think we need that. <laughs> I do. I do. We have a bunch of new people. And uh got to say, we've got Living by Luna coming up this Sunday, March. Oh, good Lord. What day is it even? It's March 7th today. Uh, March 13th is Sunday. And that will be the next Living by Luna meetup. Uh, If you are a Living by Luna patron, make sure you uh, look for that that link in your email. That'll come out soon. So, as with every podcast episode, I want to give thanks to my patrons because without my patrons, we don't have a podcast. So... We're going to start with our newest. We've got M, Jennifer, Ashley, Technobliss, Veronica, Marissa, Albany, Ingrid, Trudy, Jorge, um, or George, uh, Katie, Eslian, uh, Anna, Regine, Sarah, Sarah, or sorry, Sarah and Sarah, I believe, Warakanya, and I know I just butchered that. Uh, you can tell me at a coffee with Lori or uh, sometime how to say your name. Tracy, Chantil, Denny, Allison, Shelby by the Shore, Andy, Lizzie, Elizabeth, Ayana, Diane, <clears throat> Rebecca, Isabella, Adrian, I keep moving, Jacqueline, uh, Sarah, Jen, Lindsay, Amelia, Elena, Nancy, Elena, Jen, Wheat Wheatley, Heslandia, Alyssa, Tamari, Ariel. Welcome. Welcome to the awake space. Oh, I got to give some big shout outs to the mods. Okay, if you are a patron and you're in our Discord, make sure you say hi to Absolute. That's Chris. She is an amazing mod. She uh, She's the admin with the mostest. We got Molly. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Rita is uh, R-I-T-V-S-E on our Discord. Uh, let's see, we've got Shane and McDubbs and Kathy, who is Sister Luck, and Hannah Yogi. These are the marvelous mods. Um, 
All right. I know you've been wanting me to talk about it. We'll talk about the Ukraine and Russia situation. I'm still standing by. It's not going to be global thermal nuclear war. Um, but we are going to see things heat up with uh, Venus and Mars in Aquarius. And once those planes get delivered, it's it's going to be some back and forth. If you remember when I did the... Uh, 2022 overview of the astrology month by month uh, back in December I talked about 1856 because of the Jupiter Neptune conjunction in Pisces that's the last time we had that the end of the Crimean War happened then so I don't think this European conflict is going to last a terribly long time it has to be struck soon uh, we've got some pretty contentious astrology coming up which will show some intensification and like I said I think we're going to see uh, some pretty interesting things happen through this um, march through Aquarius with with Mars and Venus going through because they're going to meet up with Saturn um, and of course, before that, they're going to square off with Uranus. And, and I think um, that's really, we're going to see air and land clashing. You know, it's going to be who controls the sky and who controls the land. And it's going to be um, more, you know, it, it's just going to intensify. Uh, I still hold with, I believe, Putin, his days are numbered. I came out with that to... Um, People in my my inner circle I, I was talking about that since you know December because of what I saw in his chart and he's got some bad action happening in, with the eclipses and funny enough um, I got some interesting troll action on my uh, Putin video on TikTok. Um, anytime you see somebody questioning like the date or the time uh, I'm using the generally accepted chart for Putin okay I'm not pulling this up out of my butt this is something I'm using the Astro Data Bank which it already has a double D rating double D means they're not sure but I checked with people um, who do have connections and uh, they they assured me that that is to, that is what they believe is the correct um, information as well but even if we took out the rising signs and we didn't use any of the houses um putin has some pretty nasty transits happening between his venus and his jupiter and um astrologers who are less well studied might see those as benef uh, benefic um i don't because the eclipse action isn't going to be benefic to a world leader that's also why i'm concerned about biden's health um, so there's a lot coming up. I keep telling you guys, you want to keep some cash on hand. Why do I say that? Well, because there might be reprisals when it comes to hacking financial systems, et cetera, et cetera. I know we've got some pretty good security happening at this point, um, in this country, in the U S, but it doesn't mean it won't happen. So you want to have some cash on hand. The other thing you want to have is um, you want to be gardening. I got asked at the nursery when I bought Tammy the Tangerine. That's right. I named my Tangerine. You can see her on TikTok. Um, I always name my plants. It's a thing. Uh, the guys and I at the nursery were talking when I was buying my, my, my plant. Um, and they said, oh, so you do container gardening. I'm like, yeah, you've got crazy inflation and there's probably going to be a, um, some failed harvests this year. And they're like, really, if you could just like, what's one thing you would grow if you needed calories? And one of the other guys and I both said at the same time, potatoes. And I'm like, but honestly, you really want to have some leafy greens. If, if you can grow some leafy greens... Um, that will come in handy. So, because those are going to be harder and harder to come by. You know, fertilizer is going to be short supply, um, energy, water, you know, and the weather. You know, so if you can, if you, whatever you can do for yourself, do for yourself. 
you know, is basically what I'm suggesting. We have to innovate our daily lives. That's Uranus in Taurus or Uranus in Taurus. Um, it's about innovating how we sustain and secure ourselves, okay, at some of the higher levels of the energy. So that's something you have to keep in mind. You know, if you're just, if you're going to be stubborn and insist on doing things the way you've always done them, um, then that's a problem. And here's one of the ways I'm innovating my life. So it wasn't hard for me to boycott McDonald's because I don't eat McDonald's. Like I maybe have McDonald's twice a year. So not real hard to boycott. Um, Pepsi and Coke, easy to boycott. I don't really take any of their products. Um, but Starbucks... What the fuck? Starbucks is not pulling out of Russia and has decided to be neutral. And I'm like, bitch, if Switzerland cannot be neutral, like Switzerland not being neutral is like a really big deal. Um, if Switzerland's going to break its neutrality, then by God, Starbucks no longer gets my business until they stop doing business in Russia. So if you're looking at commercial boycotts, there you go. I will be just making coffee at home now, which is fine. I like my coffee. I make good coffee. But Malcolm, he won't be getting puppuccinos, and it's going to be sad. But guess what? It's not that hard. We can do it. I'll buy whipped cream. So there's a lot going on in the world. It's easy to get overwhelmed. We've seen a lot of drama around uh, beyond you know, the, the very scary stuff happening in the world. There's been some very interesting things happening. Um, as Venus and Mars were conjunct Pluto, we were watching this TikTok drama unfold. I don't know if your FYP was full of it. Mine was. Um, and I, I'm not even going to talk about the people involved because I was just like, can this not clog up my FYP? Uh, what I can say is it was very reflective of a lot of what I've been saying about pull your energy in. If you want to be in a relationship, this goes for everybody. You cannot put your self-worth and your value in the hands of someone else. Okay. Because that's what happens. And it's not a blame thing. I'm not blaming anybody on that one. I'm just saying that's what happens. We've been trained and taught to hand our value over to other people who cannot possibly guard and cherish and nurture our value in a way that helps us be whole, healthy, and complete. That's an inside job, okay? Some days it's easier than others. And, you know... Sometimes you got to watch your sinistry because, boy, that looked like a moon conjunct Pluto thing. But, um, and I've been there. I've had my moon conjunct somebody's Pluto and, woof, talk about obsession. Um, it can be hard. And we all go through this. This is human. Again, I'm not blaming anybody other than generationally we have differences on how we handle shit. That, that's just all. Um... It, it was showing reactive behavior. When we look at living by Luna and we're looking and I talk about reaction versus response. That's all of us. We may not, you know, sometimes we do broadcast our stuff. If we're hurt, if we're angry, if we're feeling attacked, if we're um, hungry, if we're tired, if we're not feeling good, if we're unwell, we're more likely to be reactive, okay? So don't think about any one of those people in particular. I'm just listing off what can happen. And likewise, when we've taken care of ourselves, we bring our energy in, we do what is considered quote-unquote selfish, which is take care of yourself, okay? Don't be a murderer. Take care of yourself, your emotional needs. Take care of those. And if you want to be with someone, remember the seventh house, if you're looking for a long-term partnership, it has nothing to do with anything except mutuality and walking together. Okay? It's about agreements. It's about commitments. It's about contracts. It's not about romance. It's not about love. Love or love. 
is a second house matter. It's about security. And when we don't feel secure, we get very reactive. Okay. The fifth house is romance. It's also risk taking and, and because we risk rejection in dating, right? That's fifth house matters. And when you're rejected, you get reactive. And then there are agreements and contracts in a formalized relationship. And it usually is legal, but there are long-term relationships that are very committed that don't have the signed government paperwork, but they have all the commitment in the world. And when those commitments and contracts get broken, it tends to be reactive, right? So that's why I teach Living by Luna. So you can pay attention to your own conscious expression and notice when you're being reactive, notice when you're being responsive, what the transits look like when that's going on, what your day-to-day -day activities are going on. There's a whole process for observation and notation and recording the information so you can look at your own personal life patterns. It's pretty cool, actually. I used to call it lunar logic. I like living by Luna better because it's just the ebb and flow of life. So, you know, my particular emotional makeup doesn't like to be wholly expressive all the time. Um, and I tend to withdraw and get quiet when, when I have stuff going on. That's still reactive. Um, some people get very loud and dramatic. And, and that's some of the stuff we saw. Um, I will say on social media, you do, you do have to, one, don't hold people up on pedestals, but two, um, remember stuff follows you. So just, just saying, um, I'm having a hard time not judging the entire thing just because it was like interesting, but, but we'll let everybody involved in that do their thing. I'm not involved. But I thought it was a great um, illustration of reaction um, and what I'm talking about when, when you're spreading your energy outside of yourself, putting it, you know, saying, hey, shine your sun on me, light up my moon. Because remember, the moon has no light of its own. So most of us go around asking other people to shine their sun. Put, put your attention on me. Shine your light on me. See me, feel me, hear me, love me. And then if somebody turns their attention away, that, that heat, that warmth, that, that shining turns direction and it's, you're cold and you're bereft and you're left out in the dark and that hurts. Okay. It hurts way more than when you shine your light on yourself and you're just glowing because you've got your sun and moon working together. And then you attract people who, who walk in a different space. Um, and if they do something hinky, you're like, all right, I'm on, I'm off on my adventures. So, or whatever, however you do respond. We'll talk a little bit about this at Living by Luna, which is on Sunday. And Living by Luna is a Patreon tier. And uh, I'm, I'm excitedly... Almost done with the book, I promise. Almost done. I worked on it. I'll work on it tonight. <laughs> um, I've got to get to my other artist because we've got a journal we'll put together as well. But anywho, that's kind of what I have to say. It's been kind of an intense couple of weeks for me because my son and Mercury are at 28 degrees cancer. I had not only Pluto, but Venus and Mars in opposition. And I will say it was horrible, but it was certainly, it, it felt like I was like going, you know, going to the moon in a spaceship at 5G. And it was just a lot of pressure inside, outside, um, and not mental pressure, just like energetical pressure. And there was a lot of internal work I had to do, you know, and it was just kind of recalibrating, just recalibrating. And that was important. Um, everybody deals with the energy differently. 
and I have a lot of years of practice. Um, I, I will warn you, I, I used to look at this time period and think, oh my God, what's going to happen? <laughs> I, when I was a young astrologer, I wasn't necessarily expecting this to be a great time of my life. And uh, I'm not going to lie, this is an amazing time of my life. But it's still, it's, it's still heavy, you know, so the energy was heavy. And now that, you're, uh, that the uh, Venus and Mars are in Aquarius, oh my God, I feel so much lighter. It feels so much better. It's crazy sauce. So, um, yeah. So thank you. Um, just a couple of announcements. Let's see, what do we got going on? Oh, in April, April 2nd is the, uh, astrological transits for beginners. Okay. If you want to start learning about transits and what they mean and how they impact you, how you can identify them, how do you look them up? Um, we're going to be doing that starting in April. It's a 12 or sorry, a 10 week class. We're just winding up. We've got the last two weeks of, uh, of uh, the how to read your birth chart class. So we're getting into the practical side of it now where I'm going to be walking people through their charts, putting everything together that they've learned so far and they know a lot more than they think you do. If you're listening, yes, you do. Don't argue with me. You know more than you think you do. And you're going to find that out over the next couple of days. It's not about perfection. And I never said you'd be an expert. Go back and listen to that first class because I told you precisely you would not be an expert, but that you had a nice foundation. So that's what's going on. Uh, April 2nd, we have the Astrological Transits for Beginners 10-week class starting. If you are a patron, you get a $300 scholarship. So make sure you look for that announcement. It's coming soon. Um, and that's it. All of the linkies are in the descriptions and, uh, I'll see you on TikTok and in Patreon and in the discord. And I'll talk about the mystery school in another episode. Thank you so much for listening. And, um, as for Alan, you know, the wisdom he shared, I think life's a beautiful path. And each of us who were touched by him, I think we we can share that joy of the subject and the kindness that he offered so many over such a long time. Thank you very much for listening. I'm Lori, and this is the Awake Space Astrology Podcast. <laughs>